Hello again from Digicore Things. Recently, I ordered some old MOS 6502 microprocessor chips from AliExpress for a project that I'm currently working on. For my 6502 based project, I wanted to ensure it would support original 6502 chips as well as the currently produced WDC W65C02 chips. Hence why I wanted to get my hands on some recovered 6502 chips so that I could fully test my project with both an original 6502 and with modern W65C02 chips. The modern WDC CMOS 65C02 has a few different pin assignments than the original 6502 so some allowance for this needs to be taken when making a 6502 based CPU card. The most notable differences my requirements are pin 1 and pin 36. Pin 1 on an original 6502 is a ground pin VSS whereas on the WDC W65C02 pin 1 is an output. Pin 1 is the W65C02's vector pull output which can be used to supply an interrupt vector to the CPU during an interrupt sequence. Pin 36 on an original 6502 is a no connect pin, whereas on the WDC W65C02 pin 36 is the bus enable input, which needs to be pulled high for normal CPU operation. Typically a couple of jumpers would be used to correctly support both CPUs. One jumper to allow connecting pin 1 to ground for a 6502 and one to allow polling pin 36 high for a WDC 65C02. Arguably you could probably just pull pin 36 high permanently but it's normally accepted that when a chip pin is marked no connect it means just that i.e. don't connect the pin. Here are the 6502's that I received from AliExpress. Five chips which came in a padded envelope just wrapped like this in some plastic cling film. So I can test that they might actually be working chips. It's time for me to build the 6502 version of the 8-bit museum's no-op tester. If you've seen my earlier videos, you'll know I've previously built some Motorola CPU no-op testers. A couple of 6809 testers. It's 6809E and that's the 6809 internal clock. These allow me to test and sort 6809E chips from the original 6809. They are often mismarked by AliExpress suppliers. Also, I built a 6800 tester, which I've used for verifying old 6800 microprocessors for another project. Now, laid out across my desk pad, you can see all the parts I need to put together the 6502 no-op tester. Interestingly, the 6502 no-op tester includes two jumpers, for the reasons I outlined earlier. That is, to connect to pin 1 and pin 36. This allows the no-op tester to be used for testing either original 6502s or the newer WDC 65 co 2 processors. So let's get busy and get this no-op tester built so that I can verify if I have some possibly operational 6502 chips. So first I'll start with the resistors being the lowest profile components.
Then I'll solder in the IC socket. Next I'll insert the LEDs. and the single inline resistor. Then the two pin headers for pin one and this is for pin 36. Then the capacitors. The potentiometer. The two push button switches. Right, then the 40 pin zero in session for a socket. And finally, we'll attach a lead connecting a USB-C socket, which is my currently preferred connection for 5 volt power input. Right, with assembly complete, we just need to insert the 555 timer chip, then we're ready for an initial test. So let's clear some of this out of the way. And we'll get the 555 timer installed. Straighten the legs. So let's unwrap these 6502 chips and get one inserted into the tester's zero session for a socket. I will also need to insert the pin 1 to ground jumper. Actually I'll also add the PCB standoffs, just so it stands a little bit nicer on the desk. Radio, that's a bit nicer. So let's insert the pin one to ground jumper. It's a bit hard to get to. And we're ready to apply power and see what happens. Let's go. I'll just borrow the USB-C power from over here and plug it in.
Try that again. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, I think that's looking more like what we expect. I'll try reset. Now remember the no op instruction is EA. So we expect when we hit reset that we should start off with the address EA. Which looks pretty right. Okay, so we'll call that one a success. Let's try this one. Yep, it's performing just the same. So we'll call that a success. Try the fourth one. And that looks like a fail as well. Let's try that again. No, that's a fail. And the last one. Reset. Yeah, I think that looks all right. So we have three out of five. Let me just try those again. Nope, that's definitely a no-go. And that's definitely a no-go. So it's looking as though we have possibly three out of the five maybe working 6502 CPUs. I guess that's a good place to start. Okay, lastly, I thought I'd try the no-op tester with a brand new WDC W65CO2 that I also have. Firstly, I'll need to remove the pin one to ground jumper and move it over to the pin 36 bus enable jumper. The bus enable jumper is over here on the corner. Right, I'll just open up my brand new WDC part, which I got from Mouser. And let's see what happens. It 
as we expect that's looking good and seems to be performing the same as the MOS 6 IO2s that worked. So that's reassuring. So it looks like I have a WDC chip that works fine, as expected, it's brand new. And three of the five Aliexpress MOS 6502s appear to be working. The other two are faulty. So that gives me a good basis to start. Next I'll get on with finishing my 6502 CPU card project. Until then. That's it. Thanks for watching.